Our next speaker is going to talk about, I think, interesting topic for a lot of people that have been talking a lot about sharing economy and the new economies and new things that are happening. We're going to talk about the birth of the abundance economy. Someone that's an honorary member of the Venezuelan Engineering College. He's uh, within the Marcus edition of the Who is Who in the World. And for the past few years, he's been consulting and advising most of the big companies in the energy space like BP, ExxonMobil, Pemex, Petrobras, Repsol, Shell, or Total. Please welcome the energy advisor for the prestigious Singularity University, Jose Luis Cordeiro. Hello, hello. I'm here to talk about the future. We are living in the most incredible times in human history. I work with different uh, institutions to review what has happened in the past and what might happen in the future. One of those groups is the Millennium Project that began as the futuristic part of the United Nations. Now, we are an independent NGO that monitors all the trends and all the, all the challenges of humanity into the future, and we publish the state of the future every year to see how the world will be like in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. And we monitor the conditions of humanity, and they have been improving constantly. Basically, if we look at the last uh, few centuries, the first country in the history of humanity that doubled its income per capita was the United Kingdom. And it needed between 1780 to 1838 to be the first country in the history of humanity that doubled its income per capita. Then other countries le learned from that experience. And the world record today is China. China, every seven, eight, nine years, doubles its income per capita. This is beautiful. Today, we know what works, and we know what doesn't work. There are no excuses anymore for poverty. There are no excuses for not being developed, because we know what works and what doesn't work. Actually, if we look even longer in time, uh, from the 11th century until the 18th century, there was no growth in the planet. This was called the Malthusian trap. We were trapped. The human condition was poverty, disease, hunger, early death. Life expectancy until the 18th century was less than 30 years of age. Most of us would be dead already. That was the human condition. Poverty, disease, early death, and hunger. But the Industrial Revolution began, and then the economy of the planet grew almost 100% in the 19th century. Maybe it will grow this 21st century 2,000%. 3,000%. We do not know, but it is growing exponentially. We are living in the most incredible times of human history. Nothing compares to what we are seeing now and what we will see in the next few decades. I like to say that in the next 20 years, we are going to see more changes than in the last 2,000 years. I repeat, in the next two decades, we are going to see more changes than in the last two millennia. So get ready for a fantastic future. Uh, to talk about the different things, I like uh, to explain the difference between manufacturing, manufacturing from the hands, and mind factoring. For that, you can see that I like also Mickey Mouse. I am wearing my Mickey Mouse tie, and I compare Mickey Mouse with PDVSA, which is the oil company of Venezuela, the country where I was born. Venezuela is very famous because of, of oil, the petroleum industry, but Mickey Mouse sells more than all the petroleum from Venezuela. And this is the example of the industries of the future. We are moving into manufacturing. And this is important, and so that you do not forget, I will put my Mickey Mouse hat, which is made completely of petroleum. This is made of petroleum, and it costs $10 made of petroleum. A barrel of petroleum today is $50, this big, $50. How many Mickey Mouse hats can you make from a barrel of petroleum? Let's say 1,000 Mickey Mouse hats times $10 makes $10,000 in Mickey Mouse hats. And the barrel of petroleum is only $50. So the business is not in the raw materials, in the manufacturing. The business is in the mind factoring, mind factoring. 
futures, we talk about four ways to think from the past to the future. The worst way to look into the future is to be passive like an ostrich. So I hope that we do not have ostriches here. A little bit better is to be reactive, much better is to be proactive, but the best way is to be proactive. We can create the future, we can build the future we want. So I hope there are no ostriches here. Or if you are ostriches, you should be technological ostriches to see what is going to happen. Um, in 2009, a new institution was created in Silicon Valley, in the heart of innovation in California. I am one of the founding faculty of Singularity University, and we look about all the technologies of the future that are converging in the next 20 years into the technological singularity that will change humanity forever. The idea of the singularity was uh, promoted by Ray Kurzweil, who is an engineer from MIT, my alma mater, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he talks that uh, according to Moore's law, computers are doubling their power every two years. Actually, now faster. They are doubling their power, and the price is coming down. If this trend continues between 2029 at the earliest and 2045 at the latest, we will have computers with more power than our brains. We will have artificial intelligence that reaches human intelligence, and then more. And this will continue happening. You can see the incredible impacts of the singularity. In fact, Time Magazine wrote a whole issue about the singularity, and they used the number 2045. But look at the subtitle, The Year Man Becomes Immortal. But for the ladies here, do not worry. Women also will become immortal. So this is happening faster and faster and faster. And I'd like to show the example of technology again. Uh, some of you might remember this. I used this. These were the first memory devices and, uh, uh, in computers, the IBM punch cards. This basically has 1K of memory. 10 by 100, 1,000, 1K. Or in Spanish, 1K. And this was a mechanical memory that after you made holes, you could not change because you could not take away the holes. And then electromagnetic memories were invented. I have one of these, which was also 1K. But this 1K, 1K was better than this because you could change, you could modify. Also, it had a bigger hole. <laughs> but 30 years ago, you had one mechanical K and one electromagnetic K, how much is one K plus one K? It's one caca. <laughs> one caca. We had one caca of memory 30 years ago. Fortunately, this evolved into all these different uh, devices that you all know. And here I'm holding a pen drive of uh, 128 gigahertz. Imagine what has happened in 30 years from one caca to 128 gigahertz. This is going to continue happening, and you are going to remember me in 30 years, and you will remember caca. But this will be caca in 30 years. In 30 years, we will have devices more powerful than your brain. And this will be the beginning of the technological singularity. This is happening in all sciences, also in medicine and biotechnology. And for that, I want to show you my human genome. All of you will sequence your genome in five to ten years with little devices like this. This is a gene chip to sequence the genome. And you will sequence your genome and you will know which diseases you are going to have genetically. You will know what you will die of. Isn't this incredible, interesting? But you will know what you might die of so that you do not die of that because medicine in the future will not be longer curative. Medicine will be preventive. We are going to prevent all diseases. Also, after you sequence your genome, you will know where your family comes from. This is my paternal line, and if you look at the bottom right, you can see that one of my ancestors is Gengis Khan. So no one here should fight with me. Now I will show you my mother's uh, my maternal line, and you can see I descend from Maria Antoniette. I come from a very aristocratic family, 
between Gengis Khan and Marie Antoinette. All of you will know where you come from after you sequence your genome, and you will be able to reconstruct your genealogical tree and find out for the first time if your father is really your father. <laughs> But more interesting than looking into the past is looking into the future. And we are going to design our children in the future. This is an experiment I did with one of my students sharing genes. We shared genes in a theoretical experiment <laughs> to see how our children could be. We will design our children in the future. In fact, you are part of the last human generation that has not been designed. All of you are here by mistake. <laughs> in the future, we will design our children. And this will be incredibly cheap. It was expensive. The Human Genome Project began in 1990, and it finished 13 years later in 2003, and it cost over $1 billion, the first human genome sequenced. 13 years, $1 billion. Today, in 2016, you can sequence your full genome for $900 in less than a week. And we expect that by 2025, you will sequence your full genome for $10 in one minute. I want you to look at those numbers. Those numbers are even more incredible than caca. Look at the exponential change in cost from $1 billion to $10, from 13 years to one minute. And I repeat, this is happening in all sciences because we are seeing exponential changes. Things are becoming faster, smaller, cheaper, and better. However, we do not understand exponential change because our brains evolved in a linear world. We think linearly, but technology changes exponentially. We normally compare between linear and exponential steps. If I give 30 linear steps, each one of one meter, after 30 meters I, ha I have walked I mean, 30 steps, 30 meters. But if I walk exponentially and I double, 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 after 30 doublings, I have gone around planet Earth 26 times and I have walked over 1 billion meters. How many of you understand this? We do not understand this because we think linearly. But technology is changing exponentially. So get ready for an exponential world. Uh, ten years ago, I went to visit famous science fiction writer Sir Arthur C. Clarke. And he's very famous, not just for a Space Odyssey 2001 and many other books and films about science fiction, but also he wrote The Three Laws of the Future. First law of the future, when a famous scientist says that something is possible, he's probably right. But when he says it is impossible, he's probably wrong. Second law of the future, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture past those limits into the impossible. Third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So now I am going to talk about magic, because we are going to see magic in the next decades. We are going to see incredible things. And let's remember, 30 years ago, there were no computers. 30 years ago, I finished my bachelor's thesis at MIT using a caca technology called typewriter. I used a typewriter 30 years ago. 20 years ago, mobile phones were beginning. 10 years ago, Google, Facebook were growing. So what will happen in the next 20, 30 years? We are going to see magic. One of those things is we are going to cure aging. One of our professors at Singularity University says that aging is a disease, but it is a curable disease, and we expect to cure aging in the next 20 to 30 years. For that, my friend created a foundation called Methuselah Foundation, a very appropriate name, to do experiments with mice for rejuvenation and longevity. In the last 10 years, we have been able to increase the age of mice three times. Today, we have mice that live the equivalent of 300 human years. And this is only the beginning. 
We have uh, mosquitoes, four times their average lifespan, worms, six times. This is only beginning. We are going to see magic in the next decades. Google created a company three years ago that is going to solve a little problem called death. We expect to cure aging in the next two to three decades. And you might have seen last week that Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chan, are giving $3 billion in the next 10 years to cure all diseases. Their objective is to cure all diseases, including aging, in the next few years. We are living in incredible times. We are going to see what I call the death of death. We are going to kill death in the next few years. I have done many TV programs with History Channel and Discovery Channel on these issues, and more are going to come because people are beginning to understand that this will be possible. Because technologies are converging. The National Science Foundation in the USA talks about the four technologies of the future which are converging, nano, bio, info, and cogno, into the singularity in the next few years. And this is in the real world. But we also have the augmented virtual world, like Microsoft HoloLens, which has shared, sharing virtual reality. We are creating new worlds. But let's come back to the real world and how complex are we human beings? How complex are we? In the year 2000, uh, one scientist created the first artificial virus, an artificial virus created in a laboratory. Six years ago, another scientist created the first artificial bacteria. So when will we be able to create artificial humans? If you look at the size of a human, it's not that big. One human has three gigabytes of data. This pen drive has 128 gigabytes. How many humans can I fit here? 128 divided by 3 is 42.6. I can fit 42 humans here and a little cat. <laughs> this is the complexity of the hardware. And how complex is our software, the human software? Because we are walking information. Uh, according to the trends, in the next 10, 20 to 30 years, we will reach the complexity of the mouse brain, the monkey brain, and the human brain. And everything will be connected to everything, the Internet of Things that we know. Google, Facebook, uh, Virgin Galactic, SpaceX, many companies are saying that they will connect the whole planet with free Internet in two to three years. The whole planet, free Internet. This will change humanity. There will be no limits to human knowledge. You will not be able to say anymore, I do not know. You will not be able to say that anymore. Everything will be connected with everything, and artificial intelligence is improving, as you know. We had uh, uh, the Blue, now we have uh, Watson from IBM, and we have AlphaGo from Google, which is artificial intelligence that learns itself. You don't program it, you don't teach it, it learns by itself. This is the beginning of artificial intelligence that really reaches human levels. Because the complexity of a human brain will actually be expanded with the exocortex. As Google says, they want to be the third half of your brain. Google wants to be the third half of your brain, and then the fourth half, and then the sixth half. We are going to increase the human capabilities, and we will connect our brains to other um, humans, to other animals. I just want to finish showing one of these technologies that will give us telepathy in the next 20 to 30 years. This is a very simple device. Um, which is in the market, you can buy very cheaply today for less than $100, that captures what is happening in the frontal lobe of your brain and transfer it to another person or to a computer. This is the beginning of telepathy. We will communicate brain to brain in the next few years. This will change the world. This will improve the human condition, human communication, empathy. So I just want to finish saying this is an incredible time to be alive. We are going to reach, hopefully, immortality, wealth, and we will colonize the universe. In the next few years, we will be colonizing Mars. So 
and applause to all of you because we can create a better world. Thank you.